In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear brakes on this Ford Fusion. Your brakes are located behind your rear wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we have to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've done so, continue on to removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, we have a clear view of our rear brakes. We'll start by removing the caliper. To remove the caliper, you'll find that you have two 14 millimeter headed mounting bolts holding the caliper to the bracket. Remove the pair. Quick inspection, we'll start this one in just a couple threads. Take hold of the caliper, give it a little wiggle and slide it off of the brake pads. Once you have the caliper out of place, the next thing that you need to do is pay attention to where the caliper piston's located. You're going to find that you have a small dust boot that makes its way all the way around. If you happen to see any fluid making its way out of here, the caliper is no good and you need to replace it. Assuming it looks good, pause with the caliper and set it aside, putting no pressure on your flex hose. Continue on to removing each of your two brake pads. Remove your tins. Continue on to the two 13 millimeter headed bolts that hold your caliper bracket to the rear knuckle. Give the caliper bracket a quick inspection. We'll set it aside. We will be cleaning and lubricating this in a little bit. Now we can start removing the rotor. Typically, you will find that you have two torque screws holding this in place. Use a T40 to remove those. Break the rotor free and remove it from the vehicle. Once you have the rotor out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is clean and inspect the mounting area on the wheel bearing hub. And typically it's a good idea to check the backing plate. Once you feel as though you have this cleaned down and you're sure there is no raised areas on the mating surface, continue on with some anti-seize. Now it's time to clean and prepare that bracket. We'll take hold of this. While holding onto it, carefully remove the slider pin. When you remove the slider pin, it's common for the boot to come off of the bracket as well. If that happens, just go ahead and remove the boot from the slider pin. Now that we have this apart, the next thing we'll do is clean and inspect our boot. We'll do that with a rag. Go ahead and give it a slight twist, slide it right on through the center. Clean out any of the old grease that might happen to be in there. 
Give a little squeeze, make sure it's soft and pliable. Clean and inspect your slider pin. The areas to pay attention to is the entire shaft area here, which will go in and out of the caliper bracket, but you also do want to pay attention to this groove up by my fingers. Swipe that out. Quick inspection, set that aside. Do the same to the other. A quick note, when you're removing your pins, you will find that they look different from each other. Pay attention to where they go and make sure you reinstall them in the same port. Clean your two ports. Just give these a quick rinse. Have a quick peek inside of each of the ports. Assuming that looks good, we'll continue on to cleaning the four areas where our two tins go. You have two areas along each side of the bracket. For this, you can use a wire brush or some fine sandpaper. Do the same to both sides. Now, once we have both sides of the caliper bracket cleaned, we'll be continuing on with some high temperature caliper lubricant. Lubricate each of those four areas where your two tins will go. Continue on with your tins. We'll be sliding these into place. Once you feel as though you have them pressed in, reach along the center and lock it in with the locking tabs there. That's what those look like right there. Double check each one to make sure it's completely secured. Continue on with that high temperature caliper lubricant. We'll be lubricating along each one of these two ports. You want to make sure you get inside and along the outer edge. Now it's time for our slider pins. As I had mentioned, you want to make sure you have these going into the corresponding ports. We'll lubricate the entire shaft of that slider pin all the way up into the groove closest to my fingers here. That's the area where the boot will ride and we're trying to prevent moisture or debris making its way in. Continue on with your caliper slider boot. We'll just take this and slide it right onto that caliper slider. Take this and slide it into the port on your caliper bracket. Slide the boot over the groove on the caliper bracket. Give it a little twist and make sure it's completely secured. Do the same exact thing to the other slider pin. There we are. All right, let's get this back over to the vehicle. Back over at the vehicle, let's continue on with our brand new brake rotor. We'll be cleaning the braking surfaces. Now we can take this brake rotor and we'll put it in position, paying attention to where each of our two mounting bolts go. Get this bracket in place. Continue on with your two bolts down along the back side. It's a good idea to use a little bit of thread locker on these. Let's snug these up and we'll torque them to 52 foot pounds. Let's continue on with our brake pads. We'll slide these into position, press them in. Once you have them pressed in, you want to wiggle them around. Make sure you do have free movement here. If they're stuck in the bracket or if you have to try to use a hammer to press them in, make sure you clean up that bracket a little bit better.
Let's pay attention to our caliper once again. Looking at the piston, you want to make sure that this is pressed in as far as you can. What you'll find on this particular type of caliper is you can't just press it in like you normally would. For this one in particular, you have to twist it as you press it in. Now there is a specialty tool for this or you could just use some long nose pliers. Come right inside of each of these grooves here. We'll twist this while pressing it in. Just be careful for any pinch points while using the pliers. Once you feel as though you have it pressed in as far as it can go, it's important to make sure that it's properly aligned so that your slots are facing up and down and directly side to side, not forming an X. Continue on with some high temperature caliper lubricant. We'll lubricate the piston and along the backside of each of these two ears. This will help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. Take that caliper and slide it in place. Once you've done so, continue on with starting on your caliper slider mounting bolts. We've got a little bit of blue thread locker on these mounting bolts as well. Snug each of these two mounting bolts and then torque them to 19 foot pounds. Let's just give this one last inspection and reinstall our wheel. Continue on to all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom these out. Get the wheel safely back down on the ground and torque each of them to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel safely back down on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friend, we showed you how to replace one side of your rear brakes on your vehicle. The process for one side of the vehicle is the exact same thing as the other. Once you've completed that, go ahead and pump up that brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test, listen for funny noises. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.